Well, hello and welcome to PMQ Live Update for Friday, May 1st. It's a new month, so we're taking a new look on things today. We've been talking quite a bit about um, you know, some serious topics and things like that, but uh, let's lighten it up a little bit uh, to get everybody in that happy weekend mood. So I was uh, lucky enough to be able to make a, a good friend through the interwebs, uh, Chef Maria Ibrahim of Eat Cleaner. Chef, uh, why don't you say hello to everybody, Chef? Hey, everybody. What's happening? Happy Friday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, why don't you go ahead and explain kind of what we're going to be doing today, a little bit of what's going on. Yeah, well, it's the first Friday of May. What? Where? What happened? It felt like it was just New Year's Eve. And, uh, you know, everybody is uh, homebound and the weather is starting to lighten up. Uh, it's starting to get real sunny here in Southern California. I don't know where everybody's tuning in from, but I would love to know if you're on live. Would you let us know your name and where you're tuning in from? Um, so we can say hi to each and every one of you. But, you know, it's all about produce for me, um, all the seasonality of things coming up right now. And I thought, let's do pizza. You know, pizza is something everybody loves. Everybody wants comfort food right now. But there's a way to enjoy it that's lighter, that's healthier, that's cleaner. Uh, and that's what we're all about is eat cleaner. All right. Well, the, it is, uh, I guess, your web page is uh, Eat Cleaner with Chef Maria. Um, and you're also an author as well. Um, several books, but uh, Eat Like You Give a Fork, that one gets me every time. So Eat Like You Give a Fork, The Real Dish on Eating to Thrive. So this is kind of, there you go. There's the, the full-on, the, the non-pixelated version. So, um, I mean, I don't know that these recipes actually come from that, but it's all kind of inspired by eating cleaner. And today we're actually going to make it fun for the family. Something We're going to do something that's uh, very specific um, and then we're also going to do something to where you can just raid that pantry or fridge. So uh, why don't you just kind of break down the, uh, the couple pies we're going to do, and then we'll jump right into the first one. And we yeah. will make all, all these recipes. You can uh, find them pretty much on uh, – where is it at here? I've got a couple of websites here to show. Uh, you, but uh, uh, eatcleaner.com, uh, eatcleaner.com slash recipes. You can find a lot of great healthy recipes uh, featuring a lot of vegetables, even meats. You know, yeah, it's not and, only vegetarians. And, and I, you know, I want to be uh, real clear with people. The whole concept behind this is not necessarily about being, um, ex, you know, being vegan or being vegetarian or being paleo or keto. It's really about a balanced approach to nutrition. And that's how I created the book. And that's how I've always coached people is we're human. We don't have to put a label on ourselves. Um, but if we prioritize produce at every meal, we're already winning. And uh, that's what we're going to do today. We are using some dairy cheeses, but there are always swaps. That's the great thing. We are using some meat today, but there's always swaps, which reminds me, I forgot to take the prosciutto out of the refrigerator. I'm going to have to go grab that. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the great thing is, is right now, it's all about flexibility. And in fact, even though we have recipes for you and you can text fit foodie, to 22828 and they'll actually come to your inbox so you don't have to go digging for them. Um, even though, you know, we have recipes, I want you to feel flexible. I want you to feel that you have the ability to go in and grab stuff out of your pantry or, you know, you go to the store and you find certain things. Maybe you don't find other things, but you have the common sense and the ability to mix and match, if that makes sense. And these are family friendly. I've got five kids between my husband and I. So we're used to cooking for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, I like how you said, get flexible. It's got to be flexible. I just like that. Uh, <laughs> that's a very awesome. fun picture. That is yeah, so check out flexibility right there. Yeah. So definitely guys check out the, the Instagram and the, and the website. Cause there's a lot of fun pictures, great pictures of very colorful vegetables and foods. So, all right. So without further ado, our first pizza, uh, what are we going to do? I think we yeah. had to adapt this recipe a little bit, but, um, why don't you go ahead and explain what we're going to be about today? Yeah, so this is um, traditionally I make this as a breakfast naan. So a naan being a type of flatbread that is uh, you'll commonly find in Indian cuisine. Um, but today I'm using pita bread, and this is more in line with actually my heritage. Uh, we eat a lot of pita bread in Egypt. Um, much of the pita bread, it's actually unleavened, so that's why it's flat. And uh, this particular pita bread that I'm using is sprouted. And there are a lot of benefits to sprouted grains. Um, the, the full grain is intact, so you're getting all of that great fiber. It's really, uh, it's much less processed. 
And for people who have gluten intolerance, oftentimes they can handle a sprouted grain. So um, just you might be gluten intolerant or you might have celiac. If you're definitely celiac, avoid that. And the next pizza we're going to use a cauliflower crust that doesn't have any gluten in it. But because this is sprouted, even people who uh, tend to get an upset stomach maybe from gluten can usually have the sprouted grains. And that's going to be our crust, which will make the perfect individual pie. Okay, and this is uh this is currently um this is the play on it. Uh, this was your non bread, but we're gonna substitute that for some pita bread. So um, some prosciutto looks like some wonderful tomatoes. Yep, we've got some fresh basil, tomatoes, a little bit of goat cheese on there that I'm gonna use, plus just a little bit of parmesan too, um, an and egg in the some nice spices. Is, so, is there an egg in the middle as well? There's an egg in there, and that's what I'm cooking up right now. So we're going to get awesome. our egg set up. And what I want to do is I want to just crack those eggs. I've got a little bit of raw coconut oil that I'm cooking. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the eggs, not fully cooked, but so that they're set up nicely, sunny side up. And then I'm going to okay. transfer them right onto my pizza. And I'm going to go grab my prosciutto real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, and, and I did want to take this moment real quick to uh, let everybody know if you have any questions or comments for uh, Chef Maria, you can ask them in the Facebook com uh, live comments. Uh, they will come to us. We'll put them up on the screen. Norma Sarah uh, Sarkeesian says, hi, honey. Norma hi, Florida. Norma. Norma has known me since I was a teenager. How cool is that? Not many people so. can claim that these days. <laughs> Well, I'm going to move that, and uh, Chef uh, Maria is going to be showing us uh, some of the ingredients she's using, and she'll put it up, the progress of the pizza. I know it's hard to see right now, but she's just kind of getting us ready to go. But she's great at just walking us through, telling us everything that she is, uh, everything that she's doing as she does it. So, again, yeah, put those comments up there. We'd love to hear them. I've got my eggs, if you can see, just I don't want to spill the oil, but just a, a kind of half set right now, and I'm going to turn the the stove off and let those sit for a second. I want to talk about my prosciutto choice. Again, like I said, if you're not a meat eater, don't freak out, okay? Don't change this <laughs> channel right now because this is about flexibility. Some days I have it with a prosciutto, some days I don't. So that's the beautiful thing about the book is it teaches you how to stay in macro balance. Um, so I'm using an uncured prosciutto. And by the way, before I got started, I washed my hands. I wanted to make sure everybody <laughs> knew I washed my hands. Um, we're all about food safety around here. So by using the uncured prosciutto, we're making, or prosciutto, as we say in, in Italy, um, we're making sure we're not using chemicals like uh, nitrates and nitrates that can really make you sick and not make you feel good in the long term. So look for the uncured when you're buying meats like this. All right, I'm gonna take my pita bread and I'm just gonna take my little uh, brush and brush just a little bit of coconut oil onto the top here. And a little, just a little bit on the bottom. And then I'm gonna pop this into my little, the, one of the best finds I've ever found before. It's a little pizza oven. It's really hot right now in Southern California already. The last thing I wanna do is turn on my oven. So you can find these little gadgets on Amazon. I highly, highly recommend them. In fact, uh, let's see, what is the name of mine? It's called the, uh, the Pizza Maker by Bella. Do you okay. know about this? This is like one of the coolest things ever. No, I haven't. Uh, I can't say that I've seen that one, but uh, they might get a, a free little shout out today. I, I think it's a great invention because, like I said, it makes it super fast. It gets really hot in there. And it's like having your own little personal pizza oven without having to turn your actual oven on. Now, I've been known to make this also outside on the grill. I'm very handy with a grill. Just saying. Girls out there, don't be intimidated by the grill. Um, now, while my pita gets a little bit toasty, I just want the bottom to get a little toasty because everything else is going to cook pretty quickly. I'm going to wash my produce. Now, something that we're known for at Eat Cleaner is our Eat Cleaner. Uh, Eat Cleaner is a line of produce wash and wipes. And right now, more than ever, it's really important that you wash your produce well. 
So I'm going to take my basil that's going to go on top, and I'm going to give it a spray. I'm going to take it over to the sink. This is a really handy little tool if you don't own one. It's an over-the-sink colander. So I'm going to take my basil over here and a little bit of arugula. I'm riffing, I'm riffing again off the recipe because I'm a huge fan of arugula. But even, it's a vegetable. Oh yeah, lots of veggies. <laughs> even um, even the pre-wash stuff, I wash again because I know better. I know what they use. It's just water, basically. So I'm gonna take some over here. And I just, I wanna give a special shout out to Melissa's Produce. They really set me up with some amazing produce, which I'm gonna share with you. Um, they are like bar none, the highest quality produce I've ever used. Um, and we partnered on a lot of things together. So I just wanna thank them for that. Some of the prettiest portobello mushrooms I've ever seen. And you're just gonna give your produce a nice spray. And we make a wash that comes in a spray bottle. We make a powder, so you can wash a lot of produce all at once. You can literally wash like 30 pounds with one packet of our wash powder, which looks like this. And we also make wipes for when you're on the go. This is gonna remove okay. over 99.99% of the junk and residue. So that's really important. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pita out for a second now. And I'm gonna layer it up with all my goodies. So, so basically it's pre-made pre -made pita, you're just kind of toasting it up, getting it crisp. Yeah, just just a little color, if okay, you can see that. Just a little color, because I don't, and now I'm gonna flip it over. I don't want it to, I like it crunchy. I don't want it to be soggy with everything else on top. Okay, yeah. so now I'm gonna take, where's my, I've got a little mixture of tomato paste and some spices and a little bit of olive oil already put together. This is something that I often have in the refrigerator already made up just because it serves us well for a quick pizza. Like I said, I've got five kids between my husband and I, four of them are teenagers. They are perpetually hungry. I, I does, Can I get an amen on that? Like anybody out there feel me on that? It's yeah, insane. put it in the comments, guys. Let us know. It is you're insane. feeding Honestly. your minions. <laughs> so um, I've got my tomato sauce that's seasoned already placed on here. And then I am going to get my prosciutto ready. And I'm just going to take each piece and kind of tear it up a little bit. I don't want one big chewy piece because then it's hard to eat. So I'm going to just take my hands and take a couple of pieces, just a couple of pieces per pita. And then you're good. Can you show us that once it's done? Because you said you put on a, the your seasoned tomato sauce already. Yeah. Just a little bit. It's, it could be your favorite tomato sauce, right? There's not the specific. Absolutely. I'm going to tilt that down so you can see what I'm That's doing. That's fine. Yeah. If you want to just while you're doing the process, if you kind of tilt it down, that would be great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, she gets that figured. I'm going to, I just absolutely have to show this because this is what I was talking about. Let's see if. Uh, arugula. I haven't had arugula in six weeks. What's that? The vegetable. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a guilty pleasure from. Uh, it's a vegetable. Yep, it's a uh, it's my guilty pleasure from uh, My Blue Heaven. Steve Martin, Rick Moranis, great movie. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of my goat cheese that I've crumbled up. I'm gonna spread it around, and that'll get nice and melty when it's done. Goat cheese is a great alternative for people who still want the cheese but have cow dairy issues. And then just a little bit of Parmigiano. I like to combine cheeses. How about you? When you oh, absolutely. Them. You get diff different textures and melt points, um, obviously the flavors, you know, um, but you can have something – that's a little crispier on top. If it gets a little charred or just uh, something that's nice and gooey when it starts melting down, that's yeah. You that's, know, that's I, nice. I studied in Italy uh, well, when I was in college, and um, I found that pizza is very, very, very different there. It's not about a ton of, of gobby, gooey cheese. Sometimes, sometimes no, they no. don't use cheese at all. So I like to just 
have the cheese be the hint of cheese. And that's what makes this dish a little healthier too, is you're not piling it up with a lot of saturated fat. All right. I'm gonna take my pretty egg. You can do one or two eggs. I made two, but I'm gonna put one on each pita. I'm making one more for my son when we're all done. So <laughs> I've, got, I've got that going right there. And then I'm gonna sure. take a little, a little uh, of the Melissa's Italian seasoning, just grind it over the top. I've already gotten a little going <laughs> there. Move that around. Yeah, that was ready to go, wasn't it? <laughs> I forgot that I grinded already. That's okay. I like a lot of spice. Yeah. There you and go. here is where you can get a little bit more individual with what you love. If you want to do a little pinch of cayenne, if you want to do a little bit of smoked sea salt, if you want to, you know, let your personality come out here. Just a little bit of mixed peppercorns to go with that. And there's already a little bit of salt in the Italian seasoning, so I'm not going to add more salt to this. And that's going to go right back into my pizza oven. Now, does that have a little bit of clearance? It's obviously it's not going to smash that egg. And Yeah, it's got clearance. That's what's so okay. great about this thing is it's got like a good inch or so above that or even two inches. So it kind of acts like a bigger pizza oven, but on your countertop. So we're going to let that go for just a couple more minutes until everything gets nice and melty. I like the egg to be a little soft. I don't know mm -hmm. about that all, but I like it to be gooey and add to the sauce. So I don't want to cook it too, too much. Well, yeah, because it be, kind of creates its own sauce once you pop it and the yolk kind of spreads. It's it's that extra dimensional flavor that it gets everywhere. If it's too hard, it's, you know, it's just going to kind of stay in that one spot. So Exactly, exactly. So I'm going to get my produce ready here. I'm just going to add just a little bit of olive oil to my, uh, my arugula. <laughs> arugula. Isn't it fun to say? And then I've got <laughs> Oh, this is the one that I wanted. Just a little bit. So a little bit of acid on there. You could do a little bit of fresh lemon juice too. Okay. Yeah, the arugula is nice. I, I, you know, typically some pepper, some balsamic vinegar. Um, that's kind of my go-to. That's exactly what I do too. Just a, I'm going to do just a little pinch of Himalayan pink salt on here because I like the arugula. I, I'm a big fan of pizza on a salad. I mean, on a salad on a pizza. Yeah, yep. And so you're getting your greens, you're getting lots more veggies on there, plus you're getting all of that savory goodness. So that's looking pretty darn good. I'm going to leave that on for maybe another minute. And I'm going to go get a plate so I can serve it up and show you what the finished looks like. Yes, please. All right. So, uh, Tim, I'm not sure uh, if you were talking about the sound for the video. It seemed like Maria heard it, but um, let me know if it's... Um, Sound, you're having sound issues here. I guess telling him this, if he's having sound issues, will help at all since he can't hear me. Right, guys? But, uh, yeah, please, I want to, uh, again, encourage you guys to ask some questions about, uh, you know, maybe flavors or different combinations. Ask Chef Maria what her thoughts would be or if you have questions about these particular recipes. Again, we're going to have another one coming up here, which is more about just kind of raiding the pantry, just making it up as you go. So uh, that's going to be a fun one, too. That's something that you know, if you don't already have arugula at your house or fresh basil or anything like that, this is something that you you you, you can do at home. Uh, so just uh, get those comments and questions coming in. All right. So next, I'm gonna just while this finishes up in my little pizza oven, I'm gonna do a little chiffonade basil. Very nice. Nice little ribbons. Basil makes everything better. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that. So, so again, just a real quick while you're doing that, what we got on that pie so far? We've got our, our the, the pita bread, we got our red sauce, we got some uh, goat cheese, and uh, what did you say? Uh, was it Parmesan? We've got goat cheese, we've got a little sprinkle of Parmesan, we've got some Italian seasoning, just a little bit of uh, 
multicolored peppercorns, little grind of the rainbow. And then the egg. I'm gonna add our little arugula right over the top. And I'm gonna cut through the egg so you can see what that's doing. Yeah, and just in the light, we can see the steam coming off from your that little pizza oven. And again, guys, uh, apologies for the light on that. Um, she usually does her uh, shows earlier in the morning. Oh, yeah, it's looking beautiful. There so, we go. you know, it just lights it up like a pizza angel. So, <laughs> I like that. And you can go heavy on the on the basil. You can go light. But look, that took us like no time to put together, and then just that nice little. Just that little bit of uh, egg, yeah, that, that nice little egg porn, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. take that and kind of move that around your pizza, and that's a great balanced way to start the day, with or without the prosciutto. And if you don't yep. eat egg, look, leave the egg on and substitute more produce. I do roasted red peppers and multicolored peppers. Oftentimes, I roasted those okay. off the other day, so I've got those for all kinds of things. Do you know, the little baby port portobello mushrooms or cremini mushrooms. Um, you can do all kinds of different things. Just, you know, it's a great way to start the day. And again, it's individually portioned. So it's great for portion control. Some grapes on the side. That makes a gorgeous brunch. What do you think? Absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, just thinking about the flavors all melding together, too. I mean, that's something I'm going to try here in the next couple of days. Actually, guys, I'm going to think about trying to... Uh, Maybe recreate some of these. I need to get back into the kitchen, make some of those videos. I've been doing these every single day. I'm I'm getting rusty. I want to get I'm back in. I'm firing you to cook. Is that what you're saying? I well, yeah. I mean, I, I it's something that I was missing, but um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my take on this. Like she says, like Chef Maria says, riff. I'll see what I got. I'll see what I don't have. I'll see what substitutions I need to make or what flavors I don't particularly like and want to substitute. So. Uh, it's something that, and there is no, that's the beauty of pizza, is there's nothing set in stone. Pizza is yeah, a blank no canvas, right and you can, right, you know, you one, can make it whatever you want. One thing that I didn't put on there are the tomatoes. Now, you can add the grape tomatoes. I've washed yeah. these already. I washed these, believe it or not, i got to show you this, because this is how good our product works. I washed these a week ago, and look at how beautiful they still are. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, gorgeous firm nice yeah it doesn't seem to be any kind of wrinkles on the on the skin it's not soft yeah so that was from a week ago crazy okay but i'm gonna add go. those to our next pizza but you could also uh put those onto that breakfast pizza and give it just a little extra lycopene power good for your heart health eat the okay. rainbow on your pizza you know what i mean well no, i do like how you're saying that you know it's not it's not all about flavor. I mean, obviously these things add a lot of flavor, but there's a, there's that health option that comes along with all this stuff. Get the uncured meats so you're staying safe, but you still need a little bit of that protein. If you don't like it, you know, you've got the, the egg for your protein. So, um, and you, I can, like, I mean, you can use protein substitutes. You know, there's a lot out there. there. I would just advise people without giving a brand name, just make sure that if you're using something that's soy, make sure it's sustainable it's vegan it's non-gmo um uh, excuse me it's organic and non-gmo because right. you know that genetically modified soy is not something that i'm a huge fan of um you know and there are other products out there made with pea protein they're made with nuts and seeds and grains and you know you can still have that feeling of sausage or like a, a chorizo but have it be uh, a soy-based product or have it be plant-based. True. And uh, yeah, I'm going to pull up. I mean, there's a lot of resources here on uh, eCleaner.com. Uh, you go to the resource tabs, they have cooking videos uh, where you've been all over the place. Um, you yeah, know, just talking glad. about eating healthy and demonstrating it for, you know, live or recorded. So. Yeah. The last, uh, the last show that I did was on the doctors and, um, and it was fun because they reproduced some of my dishes from the book and talked about how you can do a healthier version of takeout, like those overstuffed mm. sweet potatoes. You know, I, yeah. and I think, you know, while my heart goes out, I want to just say to all my friends in the food service world, 
um, people that we service with our products, but also just friends that own and operate food service establishments, my heart breaks. Um, and we're trying to support a local restaurant at least once a week. But, you know, the truth is a lot of people are hunkering down. You know, yeah. and to, to feel confident about the food that you're making, that it's delicious, that it's safe, that it's clean, that it's healthy. Um, people want to reach for comfort food. I keep hearing it, but there's a way to make the comfort food better. And that's really what I have dedicated the last, you know, 12 years of my career to is teaching people how to do that. Well, and that's I was going to ask that. I mean, just uh, as someone who is very much a do it yourself type person, uh, if you were actually going out and trying to support local either independent or even a chain, less, less the chains, but I mean, they have the employees of the chains is who I'm worried about, not the chain itself. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, you're absolutely right. A lot of people are sticking in and are staying in. And this is, this is the other option. I do support going out local as much as you can, but I mean, if you've got a fridge of stuff that's about to go bad, get in there and figure out what you can put on a pie. If you need to, you can email me at Brian at PMQ, PMQ.com. I can give you an easy dough recipe that you can make and it works great on home baked pizzas in your conventional ovens at 550 degrees, you know? So, I mean, it's just about what you have and what you can make of it. So yeah. it's all about evolving and adapting. But uh, so the next one we're going to get to, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that real quick? Yeah. Um, so something that I have taught our followers on eat cleaner, how to make, actually this was years ago when cauliflower was first getting popular was a cauliflower flat flatbread. And uh, the cauliflower flatbread is a little bit time intensive. Um, mm -hmm. And you can certainly make it from scratch. I'm all about that. But this one is for the parents out there that are homeschooling, like us, um, mm -hmm. are still trying to keep their businesses running and kill, still trying to stay sane. So this is a prepared cauliflower pizza crust. You can certainly make it from scratch and you will get the recipe if you text Eat, uh, fit foodie to 22828 but you guys I got this it's from the Jolly Green Giant and it's a prepared cauliflower flatbread so this okay. is a great option for you if you are looking for something that's already made that's a better choice so we're going to use our cauliflower flatbread for this next pizza and I actually would love a little bit of crowdsourcing for what I'm going to put on here. I thought it would be fun if we kind of make it together. So okay. I've got the roasted peppers. I roasted these off uh, two days ago. I've got orange and green or uh, orange and red. So they're really pretty. Um, I have the basil. I have arugula. I have um, fresh mozzarella pearls that we can add to those. I've nice. got a sun-dried tomato paste that I made. So with sun-dried tomatoes, um, I added some of the cremini mushrooms that I've got here, this gorgeous bag right here, um, and some garlic and some other spices to make my own paste. So that can go on there, which makes a delicious alternative, by the way, to the tomato sauce, just something different. All right. Well, I got a suggestion. Take out yeah. the stem of those mushrooms and maybe put some of that paste inside as like an upside down bowl. Yes. That and, I, and that's actually, I did that with these big portobellos. Oh, okay. Exactly <laughs> that. I stuffed them, uh, added a little bit of breadcrumb and some of the parm and baked those off and they were delicious. Oh, wow. Look at these. They're like the size of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, those actually, I love portobellos too, because I mean, you can infuse that's a, actually a good uh, a meat substitute for vegetables, because I mean, you can infuse those with maybe a little Worcestershire, Worcester sauce. I always butcher it. Um, I have to pronounce it phonetically so I remember how to spell it, but you can, you know, yeah, some soy sauce, some Worcester. It gets that meat flavor and it still has a little bit of texture. And that, again, that portobello right there is that delivery device for anything you want to put in it. It's almost a pizza crust on its own. Exactly. So you could go completely plant-based on those and bake those yeah. up. And you can even set up a lot of these ingredients for your family. If you've got stuff like literally do the pantry purge and just take everything out, take out your produce. We put broccoli on pizza. We put squash on pizza, like anchovies, no holds barred, you know? Yeah. So what, what do you think, Brian? What would you like to see on it? I've got some of these peppers going already just because I think these are gorgeous and they would be Yeah, great. I do like yeah, I do like all the colors of peppers. They're all subtly different. Um, what is that? Oranges? 
I'd like you yeah, some a nice orange and some red ones. Maybe some uh, just a little couple little stripes of each. Yeah, uh, you know, evenly based. You were yeah. talking about arugula. I again, I am a sucker for salad on pizza now. It never used to be, but it can be done very well. Um, and obviously, I would say maybe a couple of those little baby portobello or baby bellas and uh, with uh, some of that tomato. Uh, I'm sorry, dried tomato dry paste. Tomato in there. paste. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of those. Okay, I like that. Of, yeah. I'm a little bit of a subtlest amount of like pink sea salt on top and definitely some pepper. Okay. Uh, I like I mean, it, it, I'm making you a pizza right now. Nice. I get, I get it. That's, that's great. And I, I did see that, um, who actually Lee, Lee and sucker Anderson, uh, I'm trying, I'm writing down this recipe real quick, um, in the comments so that you can, this is just the basic one, but if you guys email me, I can actually give you a baker's percent. It's just an Excel spreadsheet, and then what you do is you just type in how much dough you, how much, how many pounds of flour you want to make, and it adjusts every other ingredient. And I just use my little KitchenAid to two quart, I think it can hold two pounds of flour, and that's your you can get about three 14 ounce dough balls. So, all right, so uh, yeah, right. In, any other suggestions? I'm gonna get my flatbread ready. I'm gonna okay. take this guy out. He is a little bit delicate. Oops, and I just broke it. How about that? Oh, that's all right. But I was going to say, how is he? How are you cooking him? He's not going to. He's square, so how's he going to fit in that round hole? Yeah, he's. He actually, I was going to cut him up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just. It might ex- slide it might be him okay. Here, really gently. I'm going to. I'm going right. to use this piece for now, and I'm going to cut this into two. Okay. So yeah. just these are pretty delicate. Just buyer beware. Uh, and then where did I put my? Here's my. And of course, I can't find my little brush. That's all right. We'll improvise. Just do a little bit of coconut oil again. I want to toast these up because I need. I need these to crisp up definitely before I put any toppings on them or else they're just going to fall apart. Yeah, that's true. Well, I like how you said in the last one, I mean, that was some great advice on that is just even on the pita bread um, with as many vegetables as I'm sure you're usually putting on a pizza. You do want to get that crisp barrier to kind of protect against the moisture from the vegetables sinking in and just making it a soggy sponge. So exactly. So and then these it, yeah, these guys being so delicate, I can definitely see how you need to do that first. One for you, one for me. Sounds good. Okay. So that's just going to go in there for a minute. And then what kind of cheese do you want to put on there? What do you got again? You got goat cheese? I've got goat cheese. I've got fresh mozz. And no, I've got you... a little shredded parmigiano. Well, yeah, okay. So I have pine nuts here. too, by the way. We could do oh. a deconstructed uh, pesto. Okay, well, no. Okay, so here's what's going to be. It's some arugula tossed in balsamic, pine nuts, and some pepper. If okay. you got that. I love that. That's actually – um, I made a pizza in Italy that I actually beat my whole U.S. pizza team with. I'm going to brag about it one more time. All right. But um, I it, it was I pretty much – I tasted these already, by the way. You can see they've yep. got a little color. Well, mine had – it uh, It had the slices of the portobellos uh, as the meat. I, I, you know, sauteed them in the Worcester and – uh, and then it was it was covered in that arugula mix, um, and I had regular pine nuts and toasted pine nuts, and then I had regular cherries and roasted, and I made sure it didn't overwhelm it. But um, I came in forty eighth out of six hundred and sixty some competitors. So, Dang, that's yeah, amazing! Beat a, Just a little yeah, bit I, of Hawaiian pink salt right there. Yep, perfect. So Maybe I think that would be great. Just right in the center. Yep, I'll do that. No, I was thinking. I, I don't know if I want to substitute the uh, the, port, the little baby bellas with the tomato paste, or just kind of do a cross cut on the pearls, and you could do that as well. I don't know. You All know, right, I, you, want, I want to most- show you. The, I want to show you this paste because it's pretty awesome and it's easy to make. Uh, and we'll include that recipe too. But this is something that's great that you can make in advance and freeze it um, and just toss literally with a little bit of flatbread or toss it into a little pasta, serve it with some veggies, roasted veggies off the grill. This is killer. So I'm thinking, can we try this? 
Yeah, what I, I was thinking is just use just a couple pearls. We'll just go fresh mozz there. Yeah. I do like I do want to still do the bellas with that paste in there. So let's keep that the same. Okay. So but maybe got, half have the pearls. Half the pearls half. got that. And then yeah. Is that on your uh, recipes page? Uh, eatcleaner.com slash recipes. This uh this tomato paste, uh, dried or sun dried tomato. No, you know what? I'm gonna have to transcribe it for people. So if okay. they opt in, that's a present from me. I'm gonna give them my secret sun dried tomato paste. Okay, that's perfect. Again, uh, get us some comments and suggestions. I'm you know make adjustments to my pizza. I don't care. The worst part about it is I don't get to eat it. <laughs> That was hot. Sorry about that, guys. I'm okay. I'm all right. Good, Don't good. <laughs> so, again, uh, you know, if you guys are wanting some of these recipes, and then she's going to put up a special treat for you guys tuning in here, uh, text Fit Foodie, all one word, to 22828 for delicious recipes you can do at home. Um, but this here, um, right here, this is just about, you know, getting creative and raiding the pantry. So, just making. You know, use what you have. If it's about to go bad or, you know, it's on its last legs, obviously don't eat spoiled food, but uh, use it before you have to lose it. And, um, I mean, the fun thing about this is, as uh, Maria has shown us right now, is that you can evolve the whole family. You can just put everything out there on the table and say, hey, what do you guys want to eat? Exactly. And we do that a lot. We'll do a pizza bar where we set up everything and then everybody can kind of customize their own because not everybody wants the same things. True. Um, okay, so we got the peppers ready. We got the mozz ready. We have the arugula salad. This needs another toast on the other side just to firm it up a little bit. Um, and some of that sun-dried tomato paste. Anything else? No, I think uh, I think that's about it. Uh, okay. I mean, because, again, at this point, everything sounded so good. I was overloading my pie, I think. Yeah. Because, again, think, less is more on, on a lot of stuff. Uh, less is more on a lot of stuff. I agree yeah. with you. So I'm going to leave these just because they're kind of delicate. I'm going to leave them and work right on top of the flatbread over okay. here. Can you turn it down a little bit? Not, uh, can you move it down so we can see you working on the, the, yeah. on the oven? So, yeah, because that'll be nice to see. And I did put this up there, but there are several different kind of models of this type of round home pizza oven that you guys can get. Um, again, we're not doing a commercial for any of that. That's oh, the yeah. dried tomato paste. I can smell it. Right? Smell a vision. That's yeah. what we do. <laughs> I've been working on that for the last 20 years. I it's it's slow going, guys, but just bear with me. It'll happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um Melissa's makes a sun-dried tomato pesto that's already prepared too. Just again, a shortcut. This is a great pantry staple that you can just leave in there with all your other goodies. And when the hanker and hits. And are they who sent you all the fresh veggies for these yeah, spices? Melissa's today? produce. Melissa's produce. Okay. They're all over the country. Really, really top quality. Well, thank them for this. Uh, you know, definitely uh, excited because we get to make some uh, quality pizzas with some quality product. And it makes all the difference in the world. You, I'm sure you are. Uh, you extol that, you know, message is start with the good stuff and it makes all the difference. It doesn't have to be overloaded. It doesn't have to be this big mountain of just goo. It can be refined. It can be delicate. It can be seasonal. Yeah, absolutely. And they got, looks like they got uh, a lot of stuff going on. Fresh oh, they, they're my, they're my go-to for spices, for, they do prepared lentils. They do beans. They do so many different things. What do you like? Uh, what did I see there? It was artichoke hearts? It took me. I've been growing into my own as far as flavors, but I, I definitely like artichokes. Oh That's yeah. kind of your go-to recipe if you use artichokes. You know, I you had put it on a pizza. I had those too as an option, but I was like, my counter's not <laughs> going to fit everything that I could possibly show you. I mean, just like if you had to put them on a pie, what would be your go-to flavor combination? With artichoke? Yeah. I would do um, I would do the sun-dried tomato with that. I think that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I put arugula pretty much on every pizza that I make. <laughs> um, I would do, hmm, 
maybe even like a little cooked shrimp. Oh wow, that's a good one. With an artichoke. I'm uh definitely it's I didn't I can't take credit for inventing this flavor, but it's one that I did I thought I had. But uh, you know, I definitely like spinach, the Alfredo sauce, which is very much an Americanized sauce. Um, but Alfredo sauce with artichokes and spinach and some feta. Mm. Uh, oh, feta would be perfect. That's maybe, now you're talking my culture. Maybe a red onion. Um, I think years ago I found I found it on Domino's when they started those artisan pizzas. I'm like, I I, I didn't patent it soon enough. But I mean, that's I mean, I don't know. It's it's just uh, it's a simple one. Um, I've been yeah. working a lot with avocados, trying to get those on pies too. And I'm just going to show everybody too. Here's the Instagram. I don't know if I showed it earlier, and I see a comment there. I'll get there in a second. But um, I mean, this is just some of the stuff that, that you know she's working with. And and again, this is not you, you are not pizza centric. You work with everything, any kind of meal and stuff like that. So this is uh, some of the examples of uh, some of the dishes uh, she's putting out. I got to show you and, You were talking about avocado. While that cooks, I want to show you something cool for everybody. Okay. This is something simple, and we'll put it on top of our breakfast pizza just because I'm an avocado freak. The minute mm -hmm. you said avocado, I was like, bingo. Okay, we're going to yep. take our avocado, cut it in half. And then I'm going to take the peel off the skin. It smells so good right here. That sun-dried tomato paste is like, <laughs> uh, and then I'm just going to slice my avocado here into very, very thin slices. Keep them arranged in a row. Uh, cutting avocado, they never want to cooperate. I know. I don't think I don't think they like being cut up. I, yeah, I really don't. they they uh, well, they're kind of sticky too. Can you see yep. what I'm here? Yeah. All right, um, so we got some thin slices. We're gonna fan them out. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna start to curve our avocado in. And make a pretty little rose. Very nice. You see those fun Instagram yep. avocado roses? Well, look, that's how easy it is to make. That's awesome. Just like so. And then. And it, yeah, and it's, it's got such good flavor. We can put it on our pizza. Wow, uh, okay. Little crown with the egg. Oh, divine! Yeah, well, that's. I mean, I always kind of equate the avocado as the egg of the vegetable world. Uh, it, 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 it's not the same flavor. Then this is probably just me. It just has a similar flavor to you know, just kind of a sunny side up egg or something like that. Yeah. There. Hold on one second. Let me She's make pretty. that. Yeah, that's a pretty pizza. She's pretty. <laughs> I mean, you, what would you pay to go out to eat? Like 15 bucks for that? Uh, for that, yeah, probably at the very least. I mean, stay <laughs> home, have a mimosa, and enjoy. So, all right. <laughs> so, okay. all right. So, how are we looking we're, over here? We're pretty much done here. We've got like 30 seconds left. I just want the moths to melt a little more. I'm going to grab a plate, okay. square plate for the square pizza. Did you, uh, so you made your, your one is uh, the same, my recipe, basically. You made both the same? Say that again? You made uh, both of these uh, pizzas the same, using the, my suggestions? In the little, yeah, in the little uh, pizza maker. Okay. They don't know who I am, but I know who they are. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's a good plug for them. So, I mean, but it's, it's less that it's a plug, but you actually use it and you think I it's mean, a, I really a like, product. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this thing. And the funniest thing is I bought this at like some store was going out of business and um, they had it like on clearance or something crazy. It's, I think I bought it for like 10 bucks. It's gotten 
it's gone its money's worth and then some. Nice. Well, and I, and I guess you uh, recently just got married, correct? I did. Well, congratulations. I did have a question. Um, so I'm just going to show the picture, and I, I think it's great. It's uh, maybe a, a relatively short person married a really, really tall guy, or yep, is he really, so really tall? <laughs> well, I'm all of, like, five feet tall. Okay. Um, he's six four. So yeah, it's, he was very you know, tall. The opposites attract, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations. By Thank the way, you. I just I thought that was cute. You got some cute pictures. Thank you. Yeah, we we've spent our honeymoon in quarantine. It's pretty oh. crazy. <laughs> You're gonna get to know somebody pretty well after you just got married uh, when you can't leave the house. All right. So those all oh, those look beautiful. They just came out. Uh, got the crisscross stripe of the. Or the peppers, and we got the, the sun-dried tomato basil. It's not necessarily basil, but just a paste, something you made, right? Yeah, I actually did put a little basil in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so and then I have got my arugula. It's dressed. Little balsamic, and I'm going to use my hands. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> you have to. And you're I've at, got you're my, at home. It's okay. I've got my pine nuts in there. Already. Nice. I like to pile it up right in the middle. Yeah. Well, it allows people to kind of, if they're sharing a large pizza or something like that, it allows them to get take what they want. It's hard to cut it when it's completely over the pie, but uh, and that's I do you like the the roasted pine nuts better than the the fresh. I mean, do you think there's use for both of them? I actually toasted these. They came fresh. Um, yeah. I toasted them just because I think it brings out like such a beautiful flavor when you toast them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I never really use them just raw personally because uh, I, okay. I just really think that they're much better this way. I want to get a couple pine nuts on top here. Absolutely. And then do you like a little pepper over the top? Yes, please. All right. Now you're like near Chicago, right? No, uh, no, oh. I'm in Oxford, Mississippi. Oh, you're um, in Mississippi. Oh, yeah, North Mississippi, oh, South Tennessee. Far. Well, no, I I came from the Midwest. My family's from Chicago. Lived in Indiana most of my time. So, well, there we go. It's the his and hers. Look at that. That's I mean that's some some. It's got some great colors on there, and I mean, I'm, I know the flavors are great. I'm just tasting it in my mind here, but I mean, granted, without all our talking and chit chatting, this can be done relatively quickly. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm serious. I'm though, you know? turn here so you can see it from all angles. Yeah, no, that, I, I noticed that. That was very professional. I liked, it. <laughs> and this is just the 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 pies on a plate. I mean, you can garnish this up however you want. This, I mean, this is something you can still do in your restaurant too. So it's not like you just have to do this at home. Just have these ingredients. Most of you guys already have these ingredients anyway. So it's, it's one of those things where utilize, uh, again, utilize what you have in your restaurant, the same as you would at home, you know, make sure that you can adjust your menu to cut or not even adjust your menu, but offer some specials. It's like, Hey, well, you know, we got to use this arugula now. What are we going to do? So yeah, I mean, what, arugula, arugula, oftentimes I'll throw that into a pesto. Spinach, you know, you can make a mixed greens pesto, which um, is another base for pizza that we'll often do around here, too. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I remember I started making my first pesto. I never used to be a fan, but uh, I had Roberto Capriccio up in New York, Teste. Um, he made me um, it was a spinach, no, uh Pine up pesto and uh, with sausage on it. It was actually one of our uh, featured recipes on PMQ. Oh, that's, that's course, delish. Well, yeah. I mean, he gives it to me. I'm not going to say no. He's one of the greats. So I ate it and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I went home and I made my own. And this stuff, I mean, it lasts a long time when you yeah, refrigerate yeah. it and or freeze it. It's it's one of those things that the shelf life is can be um, can be a lot longer than say the fresh vegetables. So it's one of those things where you probably won't have to make it as often as you might think, but. Um, well, you know, if we use our product too, um, our Eat Cleaner helps to extend produce shelf life and it will help to keep the integrity of the color. So if you're worried about color dissipating and freshness and you're going to be freezing things, it really helps it go the distance. And we make a food service pack in a three pound bag for 
restaurant um, uh, owners out there. So that's something to check out on our website too. Well, yeah, and that's I actually wasn't aware with all our talks about uh, about these products that you guys had. I hadn't had a chance. I mean, we we put this together really quick, um, but I mean, you have you have a shop on your website and I'm sorry, my internet's slowing down, I think, but, uh, I mean, you have all these, the food grade wash, I would assume that's, that's what you're yeah. looking at. So our whole yeah. lot of eat cleaner, it's been really in demand these days. Um, as you can imagine, but we've got our full array, we've got hand sanitizers, we've got, yep. um, you know, lots of different products to help you stay clean and safe in the kitchen. That's really where we focus is on food safety and shelf life extension. So you see a lot of right. those items there. And then also lots of free tidbits and, you know, and recipes, fit foodie inspiration. I also have a podcast. It's called Recipes for Your Best Life. And that streams okay. on um, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere where you stream media. media. Oh, that's great. Uh, so, I mean, this is, you're gonna give all these tips every single day. But I mean, do you, do you ever go, um, do you have a lot of like real to Retail uh, restaurants buying this, not retail, we but do. independents buying some of your products? We do. A lot of juice bars, a lot of restaurants, people that are, you know, concerned about their customers' health, which is, should be every food service professional's objective. It's not just to feed them delicious food, to make sure that they're safe, especially now. Right. So it really does go a long way. And it goes a long way to enhancing the flavor of the food. I know a lot of our uh, customers that are on here are great, uh, have great testimonials for what it's done for them in their home kitchen. But, you know, as somebody who um, has grown up in the food world, you know, I, I think we know about it. We understand what food safety, the importance of it is, but then do we implement it? Not always. So it's really, I think now we've yeah. got to step up our game more than ever. Well, yeah, it's less about sanit sanit sanitization. I think that's a fake word I made up, but it's more about less sanitary and more sterilization at this point and that's not going to go away it's not you know, going to get that more i mean i want to support the restaurants in my community but if i walk in and i feel sketched out or i don't know what their practices are i'm going to turn around and walk out it's just it's not worth the gamble right now so i think it's incumbent on all of us to let people know what we're doing how we're doing it um and have that full transparency no, I did, and that's actually a hundred percent correct. That we actually talked with a guy a couple of days ago, and he, it's the same thing. It's um, you, people used to walk in and want to be able to see the, the actual pizza, or you know, the quality of your dining experience. But now it's less that, and more about how clean are these people, and if not, they're going to turn around and walk out. So, right. um, this is a great time to focus on cleanliness and healthiness. Definitely, and you know, I think for the home chef too, you know. Again, yeah. in, in cooking school, the first thing you do is study food safety. But as a mm -hmm. home chef, you may have never, you may not even know, you know, what should the internal temperature of a poultry be? Which, how, you know, should I sanitize my cutting boards? Those are all things that we teach at eatcleaner.com as well. So you can really feel confident in the kitchen. Well, uh, yeah, that's great. And then, like I said, you know, if you go out to um, go out to dinner, you expect all those regulations to be adhered to you don't do it at your own home you know you, you drop a piece of fruit on the floor some people yeah <laughs> i mean or they're not washing their hands before they prep or after handling yeah, yeah. raw proteins or whatever the case might be so we've got to just we've got to make sure that we think before we bite and you know our products can help you do that at home but at the same time like give you some good foodie inspiration and and that's what I hope people will find with our books and products and and all those yummy Instagram photos. Yeah, well, and, and I do admit that uh, the other day I did drop a pizza dough on the floor. And there's always that first two seconds you're like, no, just, <laughs> just don't do it. <laughs> I know, right? Well, Chef Maria, I do appreciate your time today and showing us these great recipes. Um, people can find you at, uh, you know, eatcleaner.com eatcleaner.com slash recipes. And again, I want to show this one more time for everybody. You know, if you want to get some of these, you can opt into the, the I guess it's a newsletter, weekly newsletter. Yeah, we have a weekly newsletter. Um, so at the top, it says join our community. You can just click on that and we don't spam. Spam's not clean. So that's not on our menu. Uh, um, I like that. 
So we just, you know, we send out information that we think is timely and, and relevant and lots of good food for thought. Uh, and then you, we also have a free produce safety guide right now that's uh, popping up on our homepage. So if you go to our homepage, you can download that free uh, produce safety guide so you know how to handle all of the different produce that you're using regularly. All right. Well, I highly encourage everybody to go check out eatcleaner.com. Um, you know, I would say just Google Chef Maria Ibrahim on YouTube and you'll find a wealth of videos, you know, from all over the place. But uh, check out the Instagram. I mean, and if somebody wants to kind of reach out to you, what's the best way to contact you with questions? Facebook yeah, or uh, you can, I, we usually are hanging out on Facebook and Instagram. So it's just at Eat Cleaner on both of those. Um, join our community. Join the conversation. We do a lot of lives. Um, don't be distracted by my curly hair. It's curly right now. Uh, you might find videos from a few years ago where it was straight. Part of my, uh, my mission is to just embrace what you got. Embrace what your mama gave you. So uh, don't stress out go. about what you don't have. Embrace what you do. So there you go. That's a great. That's a a great message. Don't stress out about what you don't have. Just love what you do. So. Yeah. All right. Well, Chef, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you, yeah, everybody, for chiming in and watching. We should have planned our ukulele jam session to end this. I, right. I didn't even. I didn't mind your Instagram that uh, that much, but again, we're gonna do another show. So okay. I don't care who we have to talk to. We're gonna do something else, <laughs> some more recipes. I think it's a refreshing thing to come in and get the healthy aspect of it, as well as just the fun. And we'll learn a song. Okay, that sounds good for sure. All right, we got one more comment. Let me see here. Oh, okay, all right. So Leanne Tucker Anderson, she says this has been great, Chef Marie and Brian. Uh, you know, thank you. So people have been tuning in. They've been enjoying it. Um, this is going to live forever on the interwebs, so you're going to be able to find it there. But uh, stay tuned because we're going to have another one. Should we give one last beauty shot? One, one last beauty shot. Here we go. Our flatbread that we made. This is a cauliflower crust flatbread with a sun-dried tomato basil uh, paste on the bottom to substitute for a traditional tomato sauce. Little fresh moths little arugula dressing, uh, dress salad with pine nuts, toasted pine nuts, and my homemade roasted bell peppers. And all that uh, produce courtesy of Melissa's Produce. And then we have a breakfast pita bread that's got a beautiful lazy egg, sunny side up. We've got <laughs> a little, uh, a little uh, prosciutto. We've got a little goat cheese, a little homemade tomato sauce and our pretty little avocado rose on top. Yeah, that was a nice little addition, you know, after the fact. So uh, again, I wanna just thank everybody for tuning in. Stay tuned for more goodness from uh, PMQ Pizza Magazine and Chef Maria Abraham of eatcleaner.com. So again, thank you for your time and we're gonna sign off right now. Otherwise I'll be asking for her to make me some more food that I cannot <laughs> eat. That's the worst part. Because I don't get to taste this. So I'm going to go actually into my kitchen and try to make these. I awesome. suggest you do the same. Well, cheers right, Friday. Have a great weekend. Salud. Salud. Ciao.